So we tried our best to kind of warn you, right? Yes. I don't think we tried our best. I think we told them exactly what we didn't like from yesterday and what to do today. Yeah. I don't think we tried our best. I think we told them. And I, I was a little concerned, like maybe she made it a little bit too easy for you guys, but no one listened. No one listened. No one heard any of that. I, I want you to think about it this way, because I did go through the Ray Higdon and Jess Higdon interview process. I have a resume that would probably blow a lot of people away. I started and built a pharmaceutical agency from the ground up in New York City. Last time I checked, it was at $16 million. I worked at Sports Illustrated for seven years. I was sent to the Olympics because I knew color best. I was vice president of a bunch of ad agencies in New York. Did I mention that on the call when I got interviewed? Hell no. You want to read where I've been? Look at my resume. What I did on that call when I was first interviewed was, what are your pain points? What can I do to help you? My background is marketing. What areas of marketing do you? All I did was ask them, I interviewed them. So let your resume speak for itself and don't ever, you don't need to sell it. You already gave it to them. If you start repeating your resume and throwing it out there, you're just repeating yourself and you're losing the point. The point is, let me find out what they need and I'm gonna to bring to you what you need. Just a different way of looking at it, but it's extremely important. I mean, you weren't given the opportunity to ask, ask a whole bunch of questions in there. You had 60 seconds, and so when in that position, when you're in front of a prospect, when you're in front of something you actually want, then you have to think what's in it for them. It's, it's what's in it for them. And I'm, again, I'm trying to teach you this stuff so that when you leave here today, you see something. And many of you just weren't sure. You know, you want a coaching job, not sure. How can you win? And this is, just, this is just a microcosm of life. How can you win? You want diamond? Go get diamond. You want that dream home? Can get it. Go get that thing that you want. You can't win if, you're, if you're, you have no absolutely no focus. It's what do you want? Go get that thing. So I think a lot of you translated, because our company is so focused on impact right. and making a difference, a lot of you translated that to, well, I love helping people. And so I'm going to help a lot of people in your company or, or a lot of your customers. All of you said that. How does that translate to the company? What does that do to help the company? And think about that connection, not you're going to help a lot of people. That's great. We do that on a daily basis. We know that it's going to help a lot of people. How does that situation, if you're great at helping people or coaching people, what is that going to do for the company? And I didn't hear anybody make that connection. No one, no one here, no one here is comfortable talking about bottom line. When she brought it with a few of you, she said, how's this gonna help our bottom line? And you're like, ooh, they talk about money now. You realize that's why you're struggling with money, right? You realize, right? At the end of the day, if money isn't exchanged, you're not actually helping them. If you just have a great conversation about your product, it really makes your skin creamy and your hair glittery. It's just awesome, right? If you're just having a nice little conversation, but they don't get on the product, their life isn't changed. If they don't get in your team and, and spend money to get on that team, their life isn't changed. So if money isn't exchanged, you gotta get used to that. When someone says, how will you contribute to the bottom line? Let me tell you exactly how. I'm gonna help you have more people in rank makers. I'm gonna help more people get in the 100K inner circle. I'm gonna have the, the, and you know impact drives us, but make it a no-brainer. Are you playing to win? We wanna see some people play to win. This next challenge, how it's gonna work is we are going to actually split into two teams. And, and I'll just reveal that the winning team, and there will be a clear winner that will be understandable by all, everyone's gonna know this team won, okay? So there will be a clear winner. In the winning team, one person from that winning team is guaranteed to be a finalist. You know, when it comes to building a business, there are really two, two aspects that you wanna focus on. You know, in the network marketing space, a lot of people come to me and they complain about, my team isn't doing anything. How do I get them more fired up? This is a unique opportunity in that you will be given the opportunity to, to actually build your team. When you are entering into a situation where you're going to work with someone, whether it's for a day, whether it's for a challenge, or whether it's for their career or your career, then you kind of want to know how things, where, where are things? And you want to know about that before the decision is made. 
who are going to be our two leaders. Okay, all right, you're coachable. You guys are going to figure that out. And so you guys are going to decide as a team who are the two leaders. Go. Okay. This stage, two leaders. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. leader. I'm wait, 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 wait. wait. Everyone say what they could bring and why. Absolutely. Frank look, look. Just go. You just go. go. I am a class one instructor. Okay. I teach go. other people. I'm huge on mindset and picking out the. I'm quick on my feet. Eat and get All right. Um, fired up. You. Say it. I know how to inspire people, and I know how to care about people and get them moving. I want to find out what each of you guys want, and then I will help you get there. Good. All right, I'm going to help everybody organize into two separate teams. But... I think you should be a leader, and I think I should be the leader. Yeah, I didn't go yet. We got Genjo. Right. Yeah, Genjo. Genjo. OK, what I can do is I can get us where we need to go, and I'm going to win. And I'm going to show you the tool thing. OK. Categorize everyone. Stand up. Right <laughs> you have one minute. Let's do this. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Let's do it. So you were interviewing leaders, seeing who wanted to be the leader. Were you stepping up? Did you want to be a leader? I would have been a leader. Yet. But what, is, what role were you in when you were asking that question? Hey, I was what trying you to figure out who would who be the best for? at leading because we need two strong leaders because we want a t all of us to win. Why were these two picked? Well, I, I pick them because they're really strong females, and I like them both. Tyrone. I didn't. You didn't? I did. Right? OK. My action was to pick the strong, to help pick the strong leaders. We didn't really uh, actually make that decision. They just kind of said, OK, you're the leader. And it just kind of happened that way. So you had no input? Uh, it was a minority input, as, as far as right. At any point, did you say, hey, I would be a great leader? I did not at that point. Okay. It, it moved so fast I, that yeah. I didn't. It, it looked like Tyrone wanted to step up okay. for the role. And when it you got did. shut down, you should have said, hold on a second, this isn't fair. I didn't say my piece yet. And even if I did say my piece, I, I believe we should have had a, OK, so this person's good at this. How about these two people be, become leaders because of this, not just? So you're saying the process was unfair? Or what are you I saying? I think the process wasn't a thorough process. It was just kind of. So these, it's the process's people. fault, not you didn't step up enough. That's a problem. Because the process is never going to be fair. Life just isn't fair. It's just not. It's the people that forge new valleys. It's a person that, you know, uses a tool in a different way and says, Cali, all y'all are using it. You get to choose. Oh, no, no. You I... have, you, at, at every minute, you have a different decision that you can say, hey, y'all are zigging, I'm zagging, and here's why. See, it's energy, man. It's energy in the marketplace. Jenny, did you pick them? Process failure? I did, no, I didn't right. pick them. I actually went with him. You voted Tyrone? I did. I thought what he said was what we needed. I'll try right. to get to. Why'd you vote for these two? Or did you? I didn't. Did anyone vote for you two? <laughs> <laughs> but wait Someone... a minute, wait a minute. People agreed to this. So to say you didn't vote for this, I feel a little lack of integrity here. I mean, people agreed to it just because we're getting to you and Tyrone said, I, I didn't vote for them. Now everybody said, oh, neither did I. My thought was really doesn't matter who the leader is between all of us because we're a team and we're all gonna put in our input. You know what, we're all gonna be a team. We're all gonna have a, have a say. We're all, we, can, we can win this whether we're the leader or not. Okay. No one is gonna tap you on the shoulder. I think right. a lot of people, they're waiting. They're waiting for someone to come and don them. OK, you are now leader, empress, president, does this, you know, all that stuff, right, Latin. And, and so no one's going to do that. You have to step up. And, and I remember when. To say that it's not 